we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello. So I haven't done a late night live edit in a while. And the main reason is because Photoshop decided to not work for me uh, after an update. So I haven't been able to do a late night live edit because my computer has been running really poorly with Photoshop. Let me get everything set up, give you guys time to log in, say hi if you are here. If not, I don't care. Whatever. I'm just messing around tonight. Uh, I took some pictures of my really good friend, Ryan Chimino. Uh, he posted a photo on Instagram and was like, it was him in full armor. And I wrote, do you own this? And he said, yes, why? And I was like, what do you mean, why? What do you mean, why? Why would I ask you if you own this armor, this period accurate armor? Uh, me of all people, why would I ask you that? So uh, we set up a shoot. He lives out in Ocala. So they drove down and we spent a few hours taking a bunch of photos. Um, I think they came out pretty good. So... Uh, I started do, using this uh, spot color or color calibrator. Uh, so I have people hold the calibrator. And then what you do is you crop in and you export it through Lightroom. And it gives you a color accurate uh, photo or uh, profile for these photos uh, so that the reds are reds and the blues are blues. I see most of the difference in the blues. But basically, it creates a custom uh, color profile for you. So... Um, you can kind of see here how his color goes a little bit greener when I click off of it. So I'm going to add that. Actually, I'm going to select all. And we are going to auto sync. Then we'll go here. We'll change it to one and then change it back. And now it's going to apply this to every single photo that's on here. So um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment so that I can answer them. Uh, if you want to join the live feed and you are decent and have your clothes on uh, and want to talk about photography or Photoshop or whatever you want to talk about, uh, let me know. I could send you an invite and then you can hop on and ask questions. So let me know. If not, I'm just going to kind of zone out and start retouching this photo and uh, answer any questions as they pop up. So first, what I do is I after I import all these photos, uh, I go through and I basic color correct them. I don't really spend too much time fully color correcting them. I want to get them as close as possible to what I'm looking for. The decision that I have to make tonight is, do I want to retouch a portrait that I'm going to keep on a normal background? Or do I want to retouch a composite photo? Uh, these are pretty funny. I always have, I always try to get people to make funny faces in their costumes or cosplay because it, you know, just makes me laugh. Uh, so the choice that I have to make is, do I want to retouch a photo as a portrait or do I want to get into some kind of, uh, I took a lot of photos on a white grayish background um, that I think would be great for composite work. Uh, this one, you'll wind up seeing me make more mistakes because that is a process of figuring things out as we go. And I have no clue what I am going to do with this. But we might be able to work on something. Now, the other decision we have to make is do we want him battle ready or do we want him in battle? This one might be interesting because we can throw some dirt in the foreground. Like there's a whole big fight going on. Uh, the only downfall is that the background, I don't think I'll be able to find the right background that would match like a battlefield um, that would be available for stock. But... I actually think I'm going to work on this one. This one's a contender. 
but let's let's flip through some of these red background ones. I thought these were interesting. That's not bad. Pretty good. See, that's interesting. In, in the shoot, I had him bring his sword up, which then it gets hidden a little bit. And on this one, it's down and it almost feels more relaxed. Let's see. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll tune in on Facebook because I don't know. I need to find where is where is this streaming at, guys? Can you guys hear me good? Go ahead and leave a comment that you can hear me so that I can see that I'm getting comments and that you can hear me. I'm sure if you couldn't hear me, you guys would have been like, we can't hear you, Rich. All right. No comments yet. All right, let's 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 dive into this. We're just, we're just gonna go crazy, all right, guys? Um, and I did add a second camera here. So we've got this wide Beastie Boys style camera. Ryan said we can hear you. Ryan is in the house. Mr. I forget the name. I forget the name. Ah, oh, Dustin's in the house. Dustin, that's a little intimidating that you're watching this. Dustin is a master at compositing uh, com com composites, a Photoshop wizard. So uh, I'm almost positive he has a class on... Photoshop compositing. So maybe I won't dive into uh, Don Giovanni de Medici, de, Med de Medici. All right, enough of that. So uh, let's let's see what happens with this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it because I, I don't I don't think I'm gonna go too crazy on this one. I think this one might. Let's just see what it looks like. I'm gonna bring up the exposure a little bit. I just zoom in, make sure his eyes are sharp. We've got some sharp eyes here. Yes, Dustin does have a, uh, a composite workshop video. That, dude, your lighting in that and the way, like just the way your camera's off to the side. I haven't watched the tutorial yet. Uh, I should, but I saw the preview for it. Really well done. Um. All right, let's open this bad boy up. Let's see what happens. So uh, just so you guys know, Photoshop for me has been very wonky since I updated to the latest version. For three weeks, it didn't work at all. Uh, I had Photoshop, like I had Adobe themselves go into my computer. I watched them move my monitor or mouse all around. They tried to fix everything. Three times they did that. And after 45 minutes of each person doing it, they all came back and said, it's a known bug that we have with your graphics card. So uh, you're going to have to just wait until we get it done. So there's there's going to be a couple things that I'm not going to do on this specific document or in this file because... Uh, Photoshop will instantly crash on me. And one of them right now that I'm having an issue with is select subject. It's just not working. It crashes right away. So I'm going to avoid that. And the, the program that I use anyway uh, to kind of supplement that and I think does a better job is remove.bg, which is a website that you can go to. And for free, you can upload photos. It will remove the backgrounds on any photo that you that you can imagine. And it does an amazing job really, really quickly. If you wanna download the full resolution photo, it's about 60 cents per photo if you have a credit or credits on there. I have one credit left on here because I use it so much. So I'm gonna use it on this one. 
Uh, so you just import it, you export it to a Photoshop file, and you hit start. The only thing that I noticed that this uh, desktop app does is it does downsize the file just a little bit, which is a little bit annoying, but you'll see I'm not really using this for like high, like the highest resolution export. Um, I'm actually using it specifically because it exports it as a mask. So then I'm going to open this file into Photoshop. There you can see that it's completely cut out. It did a pretty good job. There is a little bit of mess here. Uh, and there might be a couple other options or issues in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out what my original size was. So we got 8256. And what I want to do with this is I'm going to go image size uh, 8256. And we're going to hit OK. Then I'm going to drag this layer over to my other one. Hold down Shift key and it will drop it right on the file and keep it like uh, it'll drop it right center onto the document and uh, make sure it's even. You can see when I turn it on and off, it's you can't even tell the difference, maybe a little bit around the hair, but it's pretty close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control J and duplicate that layer. Uh, close that. And I'm going to hold control click or actually I'm just going to drag and drop this, this uh, mask onto uh, this layer, and then I'm going to delete that upscaled version that I just had, and I'm going to close this because I no longer need it. So now what I have in this document is I have the high resolution version of that. Does that make sense? Good. All right, we're moving on. So one thing you want to be careful with when you are doing composite work is you want to make sure you pay attention to these details. These are things that could bite you in the end when you save it, and then all of a sudden you realize that you missed these spots that the actual program missed itself. So we're going to go through and clean this up really quickly. And this is going to be down and dirty uh, on this. A, a cool little trick that you can do as well is if you any of these brushes will work with this trick. But if you click here and hold shift and then click here, it will draw straight lines. So I'm holding shift right now and I'm just working my way around this. I'm holding shift, 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 and I'm clicking and dragging. And you can get, you know, you don't, you don't have to be too precise in here. Clicking and dragging. We're going this way. And that whole time I held, I held shift down. And then what I'm going to do is just go through here and clean this up. That's pretty good. The only thing with doing that, when and if you want to get very precise, is you could tell all of my corners are round. So what you can do now is go with your black brush and come in and clean those up real quick. Some of these corners were round, so yeah. All right, that's one of them. Now, what you can also do to see what if, if Photoshop took or if that program took away too much, if you come over here and you hold shift and you click on your mask, it will turn off the mask. So you can see what that program decided to take away. Obviously, I want to get back my sword. It also looks like it deleted part of his ring. Nope, that just looks like the background. There we go. I don't know if that ring would be uh, accurate. Did they have rings back then? Like wedding rings? I don't know, Ryan. We may have failed with that piece. All right, let's zoom in. We're going to go in here. Same thing. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go back to my brush. I'm going to downsize. I'm going to hit X to go to black. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to work my way around here. Now you see this sharp edge here. I'll show you a little bit of what I do. I'll go too far into it, back it out, and I'll go this way. And then I'll go too far here, back it out, and then I'll go this way. And then I'll clean this up a little bit. And this is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. You can do the pen, the pen tool way. You can do... Uh, 
you can go in and just really fine tune it. So the signet was ring was a thing, but it, that's not that's not what that is, dude. Right? We're dealing we're dealing with a wedding ring in this photo. Oh, you're not. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. All right. I don't know why I thought I knew better than you, Ryan. I don't own armor, and you do, so I should have just defaulted to that. All right. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. So I pre-downloaded some backdrops. I didn't test them out, so I don't know how this is going to look. And this is pretty much what the process is. It, unless you're like Dustin, who is an amazing 3D artist as well and can create your own backgrounds, or you shot your background plates beforehand, this could be better planned out. But I didn't do that. So this is the uh, trial and error phase of trying to find a background that looks pretty good with uh, our warrior on here. So I'm going to test this one out. That's not too bad. I think we might need to go a little bit more dramatic. Something like this. Ooh, that's not bad either. Do these look like the foothills of Italy? I don't know. I do kind of like that spike behind him. But what do we do? So if we put that there, here's so we could do this. We can commit that. And then commit it. And we can drag a duplicate over. So right now I'm holding Alt and I'm clicking and dragging and I'm holding Shift so it stays locked horizontally. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to free transform. I'm going to flip horizontal just like that. And I'm going to hold Shift again and I'm going to slide it to the left. And basically I just duplicated that and brought it over. Another thing I can do too is I can actually bring it over and hide that seam behind Ryan, and he can kind of be where I blend that background. But I don't want it to be the match of what's on the other side. So we can go about here, and then we can mask. You got to watch this line up top, but he's blocking the rest of it. So um, we could just, just do a gradient mask here and kind of bring that in. You also want to watch out for stuff like this where the clouds are kind of mirroring each other. Um, that doesn't look too bad. He might be a little too low. So maybe we bring this down. It's getting there. not too bad it's not a bad start no we don't want that we don't want that maybe we can let's scale this up a little bit more we're gonna uh i'm gonna select both layers control t you know how big this file is go up to here A good thing, too, is that because it's a composite, we can also reframe Ryan. He doesn't have to stay there. Typically, what I like to do, though, is even though he's masked out, I like to keep a background layer exactly where my foreground layer is. So, for instance, uh, this layer here where he's masked, I'd also like to keep one where he's not masked. And if I move them, I will move them together uh, like this and it will move all of it together. So now when I turn off these layers, you'll see that this is cut off over here because I moved all of it over. 
I do that because I may want to go in and add some detail into the background that I didn't want to remove. And typically that's in the hair when I go and clean that up. Um, but that looks pretty good. And I think we're missing part of the rest of his sword. Yeah, it cut off. I'm going to have to clean that up real fast. Hold on. This did not do a good job on that sword. So I'm actually just going to bring the sword back. Like that. And then I'm going to hit X. I don't know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, horoscope readings. All right. Now I'm just going to blur that a little bit to match. You got to make sure your masks match the focus on the picture. This sheath is out of focus, so we want the mask to be out of focus. If not, you will have a sharp line and it won't match. There is a little bit of detail I want to add back in there. Hold on. Is this real life down here? Is this is this a mesh? Oh no. That's a mesh. You can see through that. What a nightmare. All right. Well, that changes things, but we can uh we can work around it for now. I'm not going to cut that out. Uh, technically, you should clean that up, but uh, we we can work around that. We're going to hide that, I think. I don't know. Again, I don't even know what I'm doing here. So let's see. I, I don't like how the cloud up top is mirroring itself here. So I am going to blend that a little bit more with this mask. That did nothing but cause problems. Hold on. Another thing I could do, too, is just add another cloud over his head. All right, we'll work on that in a minute. Uh, so part of what you want to do with composites as well is you got to match the depth of field. This was shot pretty sharp. So this was shot at an F10, 50-millimeter uh, lens, pretty sharp. Um, but it's not as sharp as a photo that was created specifically with the landscape in mind. So you could see how the outside of his armor is softer than these mountains. And we don't, we don't want that. So, uh, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to compress these down. I might try to find a different photo for this background. Let me see. I do like the mountains, though. <laughs> All right, let me see.
This one's pretty epic too. There's a lot of epic stock photos out there. And that one looks like a helicopter. We can't do that. All right. The other thing you got to keep in mind, too, is perspective. You got to make sure the perspective matches and it looks like he's actually standing on the ground. Uh, this you can run into this gets really hard when people's feet are involved in composites. At least that's what I noticed. Uh, so one of the, one of the challenges with oh, look at that. We got power cords in this one. Um, one of the challenges with using stock photos for composite work is that you're limited to, uh, so this, this photo is heavily processed. And the reason why it doesn't really match right now is because my photo doesn't match the color treatment of this background. So I know there's been plugins that have come out with Photoshop for matching treatments and coloring. It doesn't work that well. I think there should be a, a website out there that really offers raw uh, stock photos that I can download and then color treat myself um, because this is just too much. I mean, it's this is this is great if I'm going to use this on a website, but it's not good for composite work, which I guess isn't the only goal of stock photos, but it would definitely increase. Uh, downloads or usability if they just had a little bit of a raw setting to them um i'm looking through a couple more photos here because i might want to grab one more that one's kind of epic another thing you want to do too is you want to match the lighting so this one's not too far off because the sun's over to the left. And we could probably make this one work. You can kind of maybe add like a haze to this and it would it would make him pop out a little bit more. I wonder. That's not too bad. So like I'm going to pull in a different picture real quick. Nope. I did like this one a little bit too. But we do run into, there's not a lot of drama in the sky on this one. I do like that tree. This one looks like he uh, he heard something on his property and then like threw on his armor and ran outside. I wonder what would happen with something like this. Thanks for watching, guys, as I fumble through this late night live edit as always i don't know what i'm doing as far as i don't know where i'm going with this um but we'll figure it out as we go this one might be cool i know you guys can't see what i'm looking at but i'm pulling them over as quick as i can again if you have any questions let me know you want to join the live feed let me know i'll send you a link uh you gotta have a webcam and uh have clothes on preferably all right let me drag this one over That's not bad either. Might be too much ground.
Not enough ground. I don't like that mountain cutting through his shoulder like that. I might go with that dramatic one. I think I like this one the best, guys. All right. Let's go with this one for now. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go filter, blur gallery, field blur. And I'm going to start getting that background to match a little bit. The reason why I'm going with this one, mostly because it's it has the least amount of treatment to it. It's a little dark, but it does have the least amount of treatment. Um, so we can field blur this. That's too much. Or you could tilt shift blur this. And what, what I mean by that is technically the grass that's closer to our subject here will be in focus. So we don't want the whole background to be out of focus. So what we'll do is we'll bring this down and we'll feather this as it goes back to about the mountain ridge there. So we have a nice fade from here to here. Um, and then that can go out of focus up there. That's pretty good. Thank you to the three people who are watching me. Uh, retouch photos and drink LaCroix. All right. That's rendered. So I'm going to delete these other ones. And then another thing you should do eventually because it, it's going to be really hard to save this file. And although we can only see what's on the screen currently inside this gray box, this background actually extends really, really big. Because if you remember, we scaled that up. So if I if I hit Control T, you're going to see this giant outline. That is actually how big that background is. Uh, this is kind of cool because you could do like, if you uh, you could do like a cinematic, you could animate this. If you wanted to do some kind of movement thing, uh, but what you can also, what you should do when you get your background where you want it, is you want to crop, you want to crop this down and remove the background. So, um, what we're gonna do is, oh, I'm on a selection. So, Control D, go here. We're gonna go here. And we're just going to go original ratio. That's going to give us a crop of where we were. As you can see, all this other stuff is going to get deleted. Uh, so then what you want clicked up here is delete cropped pixels. And that's going to eliminate everything else outside that box. So there's no difference to the actual photo here. Except for the fact that now, if I move my background, I have nothing there. That is what I have. So I'm pretty committed to that right now. Right? So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Control, click on my mask. And then what I want to do is I want to select, modify, contract about two pixels. Because I saw a little white glow around his uh, armor here. And then I am going to get a black brush at 100%. I'm going to hit Control Shift I. It's going to invert my mask, and I'm just going to run this brush around the outline of this, and that's going to bring my edges in pretty tight, and then clean up that that kind of background there. All right. The next thing we have to focus on is Ryan himself. We do want to make sure that we retouch the subject and not get carried away with all the compositing. 
So what I'm going to do is the first thing is typically I would go in and spot heal anything that I didn't like. So I'm going to get, I'm not going to get rid of any of the scrapes or anything like that because I like that. I might get rid of that hair. Um, let's see. We'll zoom in on Ryan's face. Get rid of his rogue nose hairs. Let me shear. It just bothered me. I don't know why. And we want to scan the whole body. We want to make sure nothing on there that you don't want except for this area here what you know what might be an easy fix for this is a new layer that has a hue layer hue adjustment layer i'm gonna sample this background now this should probably be done at the end and then let me see what happens nope that ruins it delete that All right, that's pretty good. Next, I'm going to go to the Infinite Luma, and I'm going to create a luminosity mask uh, that's going to highlight some of Ryan's face, probably right around there. I want to hit a smooth on it so it, it breaks down that the harsh edges on that. Then we're going to go curves with that selection. And now I have a pretty solid mask here that gives me all my highlights. Now... In here, you have to be careful because these will get overexposed when I adjust this. So next, I'm going to go here and start bringing that up. I really, I'm focusing mostly on his face here. Um, always turn your layers on and off to see what the adjustment was that it made. That looks pretty good. The next thing I want to do is the magic eyes from the Retouch Academy panel. While this is loading, let me know if you guys have any questions. We'll go back now. I'm also going to do a dodge and burn layer on here. And there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add, I'm going to go in and retouch those eyes. So I'm going to have a soft brush. I'm going to go about 10% opacity on the brush itself. And then I'm just going to come in here and bring that out just a little bit. make those pop and what i'm going to do is go to my hold on that's no good better Ooh, look, now I can reach the whole screen. All right, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to do some dodging and burning in here. Now, the luminosity mask did add a lot of highlights and give me a good base for it, but I like to take it, some of the spots, just a little extra to kind of give it that surreal 
feel to it. Um, And this is what well, takes a little while, but it's worth it. All right. Now, now that we got Ryan pretty much retouched, you, you could take this a lot further with the retouching and kind of uh, maybe smooth out his skin a little bit so it looks a little bit more illustrated. Um, but I'm not really going for like a fantasy piece here. So next what I'm going to do is start color correcting. I'm going to uh, add a lookup uh, color adjustment layer. I'm going to do I usually like foggy night that kind of ties it, it it looks bad right now. Uh, so Craig says, stop touching Ryan. I can't, I can't, I can't, Craig. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to do another luminosity mask, but I'm only going to do the shadows. So something right about there. All right, I'm going to delete this one that the adjustment layer came on and I'm going to apply that to that. And that's going to bring that's going to bring my shadows almost even with the background. Uh, the good thing about this too is we can now go in and let's start color correcting the background to kind of match what we're looking for so that the background matches the lighting a little bit better with the foreground. It's a little bit better. So the lighting on his face, to me, feels like it's a brighter day, right? So it's it's definitely brighter out. It's not as dark and gloomy as this was. This kind of has an overcast feel. This doesn't. So the next thing I want to do is I'll do a black and white layer. And this is where Photoshop crashes on me. It's going to crash right now. I knew it. All right, so you can send a report, and uh, that's the report I'm going to send. Let's see what this tells me. 
Adobe has found a solution or workaround for the recent error in Adobe Photoshop. Please click the below link for more details. I wonder what it's going to tell me. Uh, nothing about working around. So um, let's go back to this. And I'm going to restart Photoshop. And hopefully the recovered file is there. But we are going to lose a lot of the work. Uh, so I'll open Photoshop. Has anyone else had these problems with Photoshop since the update? It destroyed my computer. Destroyed. So this computer that I'm working on has uh, two. It's a, it's a, a dual processor media server. Uh, that's like $27,000. So I lost everything in, in what we just did. Um, man. All right. So we're back to this point. I'm going to color correct it. Let's, I think it's the black and white layers. Here we go. Black and white layers. They loaded. It's going to crash. I'm going to send them a nicer one this time. OK, guys. Well, a majority of the work with compositing is color correction perspective, making sure that uh, the perspective matches the backgrounds. Uh, that's your camera angle. That's your focal length. That's the camera. That's the uh, distortion from the lens. You want to make sure all those things match. Um, and a majority of the retouching that I do includes a black and white layer that, uh, that we pretty much go in and and adjust the colors individually. Um, we we photographed a lot that day. I mean, we took 219 photos. I've got some nice close-up shots that I could work on. Um, I tried to keep them very. Oh, we also tried this. We tried this one shot. Let me see if I can find it. Look how dark these are. Where are these? These were misfires. This is uh, Ryan blowing his hair up because he can't move his arms because of the armor. Let's see. We did this this one shot where we shot through uh, the V flat, and the V flat was kind of open just a little bit, just like that, and the light was coming right through here and he that's what he's looking at right here which is gonna this is gonna retouch pretty nice uh that's gonna be a pretty cool photo we tried somewhere it was like you know get a little bit more angry or just a little bit you know a little bit more character uh ryan's an actor so working with actors, they just have a, a wide range. They're a lot different than models. Um, but that's kind of a cool look there. And let's see. I do like that one. I'm going to star that one. You can kind of see in this photo, I got a little bit of the V flat off to the side with just that little opening for the light to punch right through uh, and just hit Ryan right, right, almost like he's looking through a door. That one's pretty good. I like the intensity on that one. 
I feel like this is what they did in old paintings. They were just kind of doing like a random movement or something like that. Like, but I also thought this was cool to have him kind of like, maybe he's doing his rounds and, you know, he saw something through a door or there was a light or he's looking out of a, a narrow window in the, you know, the, the castles had those narrow windows. Um, I also did some close-ups of these, which is kind of interesting lighting. Yeah, here that's an F one point eight. So Ryan, Ryan was around when I first started my photo business. He walked into my studio, and uh, he was a model at the time. Model, uh, and instantly he. It was like the next day he was working at the studio, trying to help me build the studio. He's been amazingly supportive for almost 20 years of me doing photography, uh, helping us charge money when we shouldn't have been charging money. Uh, but he's been around. He's an OG. He's been around. He's been around since the beginning. So... See, and here, here's another thing I'm torn about with doing, like, trying to go for that Rembrandt feel. And this, I haven't really gotten an answer for this, but, like, or in any of the tor tutorials that I've watched on Rembrandt-style lighting or getting that painterly kind of look or feel, is in paintings, they don't paint things out of focus. It's it's sharp. It's tack sharp, Right. So um, when doing a photograph, maybe part of it looks like it's out of focus because they're softer brush strokes. But when doing a photograph, maybe do you do softer? Do you do shallower depth of field? See, I don't know which one I like better. Uh, this one, definitely that one. That one pops a little bit more. There's a little too much light on his arm, but. It's not bad. All right. That's pretty good. Well, all right, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't finish that composite. I will try to finish it, though. Um and get through the rest of these photos but um photoshop again with that update it just it's no no good i think we should just retouch this photo well anyway i'm gonna sign off it's been 53 minutes i'm sorry we didn't complete that photo i had a feeling photoshop was going to crash on me uh but hopefully they fix their program soon and update my Photoshop so that I can actually get some work done. All right, guys. Have a good one.